All right. Hello to everybody watching. Um, I'm very excited to do this typing session because this is somebody I've known for a while, and there is, you know, a lot of things at play with this person. You know, we, uh, lots of different things in play, but we're going to do this as objectively as possible. We're going to go through and we are going to assess, you know, what is really going on with the specific questions I want to ask here. And I think that's what's so beautiful about all this through really these questions is how we get the types. And our understanding of this is how we get the types. And you got to love it. Anyway, hello, Alexander. How's it going? It's going well. You? Awesome. Yes, very, very good. I, I couldn't be happier, honestly. Um, Amazing. All right. So let me let me get all my crazy document stuff up. All right. Mm -hmm. Make sure the recording looks good. Perfect. All right. So let's get this thing rolling. Um, all right. So Alexander. All right, mm -hmm. I think I know your age, but just, just for starters, just tell me how old are you? 29. 29 years old. Wonderful. All right. So tell me, first and foremost... It's going to sound a little silly again because we've had a lot of long discussion. But again, it's going to seem a little bit redundant, but you're going to have to bear with me. What oh, do you do right now? What are you doing and what do you plan to do? Like, what are your... Or just tell me about the now. Yeah, so right now I'm currently door dashing. It's just a side gig. And I, uh, I'm i enrolled in a, uh, like a short-term immersive uh, trade school, I guess you could call it, for uh, product design. And my goal is to get into product design, um, get certified and potentially into product management, and then potentially uh, finish college, maybe law school. Yeah, we'll see. Plan it by year. All right, cool. <clears throat> One second. I like how you asked me what I do, and I told you my like life's mission. That was weird. Yeah, you know this guy because I, you know, you paid notes to that too. I was like, okay, so what do you do now, and then what do you plan to do? I was like, actually, what do you do now? Oh, you so, said plan. Did you say plan to do? You may have that. No, might be it was. I was kind of just rambling. I'm not gonna. I'm, okay. I wouldn't say rambling, but I was just kind of like, actually, let's take this question one step at a time. But beautiful answer. Thank you. Um. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I guess you kind of did give me the, the the future plan, but maybe we could expand upon that a little bit. So when you okay, so if I remembered correctly, <laughs> like three seconds ago, you said that you know you want to get certified, you want to do this product design thing, get into the management, but after that, what happens? It's you said law school, you said you're playing it by ear, but like let's say yeah, if so you had to as candidly as possible tell me how you think this will transpire after product manager, <laughs> Alexander. What mm -hmm. happens from that point until you are dead? I'll probably work uh a lot as a product manager for a few years. Um, try to save up as much money as possible. Uh I have entrepreneurial experience. I'll probably um, try to do my own thing in uh, with product, mm -hmm. um, and I think from there, uh, do sc like schooling obviously while this is all going down, and uh, potentially go to law school. It's either going to go one of two ways. It's either I go to law school and I uh, do that for a while, and I try to enter a career into politics. Uh, sometime in my early 40s, probably, or I just double down all the way and just try to make as much money as possible and potentially, uh, I don't know, enter the pu enter the public arena in some way. Mm -hmm. Like there, ha like I have to be. I don't know. I feel like I feel like I have to be like a public figure to be happy. But ironically, I think if I was a public figure, I'd probably be very unhappy about it. But, you know, again, we're playing it by ear. Yeah. Let's see. One second. <clears throat> All right. So again, you said that you you said that you want to be in this public field. You want to be in this public arena, as you said. Why like I guess 
you could try to more or less elaborate to me why exactly you want to be in this public arena mm -hmm. and you expand upon it a little bit but kind of give paint me a picture here of like what you see as this public like why what is this public arena to you um it's tough to say i think i just don't see the point in meandering through life Mm -hmm. uh i want to live my life with like a high spirit uh i want to do the most i want to um i don't know i want to be remembered it's very important to be remembered and yeah i think if you're going to be remembered uh for a long period of time you're going to need lots of people to remember you and you're going to need to be uh worthy enough to be talked through talked about through generations and so i think that i just have to leave a you know, a massive impact as much as I can. Okay. I don't know why. I think maybe, um, I don't know. Maybe I didn't get enough attention as a kid or something. So now I'm just like trying to go all the way in on it. All right. One moment. Mm -hmm. All right. Wonderful. <laughs> so we will move on to a slightly different topic. Um,. I guess we can kind of transition into something you were perhaps leading into, you know. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your childhood and in turn if you if you want to expand on it, you don't have to, but you can also exp you can go from childhood to now and kind of just give me a life story, really. Uh yeah, so um born in the Midwest, uh single mother uh really boring mm -hmm. um broke not many uh you know opportunities um <clears throat> sheltered uh but com just refused to be sheltered pretty much i think i was like i had a mom who tried her best to like hide me from the world and shelter me and all i could do was just like the complete opposite like i refused so yeah i had lots of uh lots of fun lots of uh friends once i got into like uh middle school junior high school i had a shit ton of friends big friend group um always trying to get into some stuff and um i don't have the best like memory uh so i i don't really remember lots of like little individual things but yeah lots of Lots of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. All right. So when you say fun in this instance, because I want to, I you know, you t you're telling me about the story, and I think that's good. And maybe we could get into some deeper aspects of, you know, from the then to the now. Because I think mm -hmm. I, I, I'm going to be candid with you. It's, you know, I, be, I mean, even just based off of these answers, I think that we already can kind of see that there's some clear and I valuing traits with you. Um, so it's, it's really this is going to be a lot of the session. It's going to be analyzing kind of your concept of time. It's going to be how your vision really transpires, because that that is important. You know, we we know your values to me seem really clear. So this really, you know, if it's an I valuing, we know how that goes. But yeah. I think mm -hmm. that's going to be the key to figuring out what I truly believe to be your type is, is how you, how good you are at this, what I interpret NI to be. Um, but again, what I want to ask you based on that and just, just general question, you, you say that in high school, it was a lot of fun, right? Um, yeah, okay. for the most part. I mean, I hated being there. I was a terrible student. Mm -hmm. Um, I, yeah, a terrible student. I wasn't really there to work. Like I was there to just you know get through the day i was there so i wouldn't have to get grief from my mom um i always planned to drop out as soon as i hit 18 as soon as i was able to uh, to drop out i would and what do you know as soon as i was 18 dropped out um yeah i just i don't know i felt like i i knew uh i i may not have known exactly what i wanted to do um, I know I made I made a lot of music back in the day and uh, stuff like that, and I had goals of maybe making it as a musician, but I wasn't 100% sure of that. But I knew that I was going to do something big, 
and I knew what I was capable of, so I never doubted myself. So I knew that I would drop out as soon as possible. Um, but yeah, I had, like I said, friends and stuff like that. And, you know, you could find me either goofing off. I was a class clown. I was a class clown ever since fifth grade. <clears throat> I don't know why. It was fifth grade, probably something about my brain development or something at the time. Puberty, maybe I just, I don't know, got a little insane. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I was the class clown all through school. Um, either fucking off or sleeping or, you know, staring at the wall with ADHD. That's about it. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, with that being said, I guess more or less why was that fun, but what is fun to you? What are some things you enjoy to do? Um, I like, I, I'm trying to think of the most fun thing to me. Mm -hmm. The most fun thing to me is just being wrapped up in a good time. Ooh, okay. Um, like, like being with uh, a group of people that I like that are on the same mission as me, um, going out, enjoying our life. Um, I like socializing. I love traveling. Um, I like pursuing goals. Um, I just like, like strong, uh, exchanges of energy. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's what I, you know, I really like that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I find that the things that I actually find fun, I think that if you asked a lot of people in this community what I find fun, they'd say a bunch of fucking retarded shit. Um, I don't know if I can cuss. I just forgot yeah, that you're recording 500%. this. 500%. But... You can, at this very okay. moment, if there's going to be an, any, any issue with, you know, further progression, and this, you know, uh, telling my viewers too, I often, you know, I'm new to this, I have to acknowledge y'all, I apologize. But essentially what will happen is if, there, if there's any sort of funny stuff with that, I will gladly just take the video, edit it myself, bleep out some stuff, and we'll be good to go. So that you yes. have no responsibility just except to answer the questions and, you know. Okay, cool. All right, yeah, so, <clears throat> yeah, like, I feel like um, if you ask the average person in this community what I like to do for fun, they would probably say measuring fucking skulls or something. But but in reality, um, I don't, I don't, like, that's not fun. That's kind of, like, fun in a coping sense. Yeah. Like, my life is not ideal right now, so I find uh, different ways of having fun that are not, like, doing the things I would typically do that require me showing face and doing a lot of stuff so so yeah all right one second hmm. now something this makes me think of is i mean we I, I like to go into these things and really just try to act like i don't know you and i mean you for the first time but mm -hmm. again i say that some personal not necessarily bias but more so just like i guess information comes to play so this makes me know that i often you know in the community in the you know the discord community everybody watching by the way go to the link down below and join my server if you want to participate and type talk and maybe get typed but um alexander i know that often you have a lot of enemies but then you also have a lot of friends first mm -hmm. i want to ask about this is do you feel like the people that would probably call you enemies or the people you don't like do you think that they treat you specifically unfairly no no like i completely get it um okay. when i first came to this community i was I, I made a lot of enemies uh i i don't think i was necessarily trying to i was more so just sharing uh my beliefs and worldview and ideas and everybody was fuck um yeah everybody went fucking uh sorry i just completely blanked out yeah i was sharing all, all this stuff and people seen it and took issue with it and like rightfully so completely get it but yeah definitely have some uh i wouldn't consider anybody on this app <laughs> an enemy but i know a lot of them consider me enemies yeah so yeah. i guess when okay so the, what's interesting about that too and what's really cool about this typing in comparison to like 
I don't really know why it would be the case, and I'm not going to try to explain this away with any sort of socioeconomic terminology now, but I'm just observing what I see. Blockoman often it was very much just like question and answer, you know. If I were to have a conversation in public like that, it would sound normal, but it just kind of would sound more like a, I don't know. It sounds a little bit more formal in that regard, per se. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe this has something to do, if I do have to chalk it up to something, maybe the, you know, the type I assessed him with was TE valuing, and I think we're getting really far away from any chance that you're TE valuing, you know, I think right. it's safe to say that you're probably in beta quadra, and something I want, I've want i taken a lot of notice is that with your answers, it, it's very much like I'm, 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 I'm typing all of this on a document and saying what I think. But really, it's it. I honestly have like the want to just like stop typing and just listen to you talk. You're, you're like, what's interesting about you, Alexander, is that with all these answers, it feels like honestly, us talking is just like a normal conversation. But it also feels like a very meaningful right. one. You know how to get deep with stuff. You know how to assess stuff and really just like you have something here. But I don't know what it is. Um, huh. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um. But the last thing, you, or one of the last things you said is you said people seen it and they took issues with it, and you said you, you understood that, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I okay. completely get it. So where does that come from? You say you understood why they took the issue. Now explain that to me, or why they, yeah, because, why they treat you this way, yeah. Yeah, like I've, I've definitely looked silly. Like I've made myself look silly a few times, quite a few times. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like I think... Mm -hmm. Whenever I sit on here and I listen to, you know, like Boost did say like, oh, yeah, you're an alpha, you're an INFP, like changing his mind every day and just saying shit, it annoys yes. me, right? Okay. And so, yeah. like, the way that that, but I love Boosted, right? But but the way that do. that kind of annoys me, I can completely <clears throat> see why someone would be annoyed by me saying, God knows, whatever right-wing manifesto that I was writing, you know, like, I completely get it. Okay. In fact, I would, I would be more worried if they just kind of sat there and dealt with it. Um, allow me to amend what I said prior to that, too, based on like the uh, you know how you detail things and how I'm really appreciative. This is kind of fun, honestly. I think this is really fun hearing you talk Please. about these things. But what, what's interesting is like with that, I said, you know, why did you understand? You said because you thought that you you at least in the eyes of them assessed that you thought that you kind of could have come across as looking silly is what you're saying that's like part yeah of okay. well i was objectively more silly i was just okay. fucking mentally ill yeah and that's total. Yeah. yeah and I, I get what you mean by that uh not mm -hmm. saying i'm a yeah I, i'm not injecting anything to that i'm just saying i understand what you're saying right now and then my the second, problem sometimes r real quick if i could just say this too of course um yeah. i never i never hold somebody uh <clears throat> to the standard of their worst mistake um, so many people do that. So many, someone will do something and someone will see this person through this, uh, lens for eternity mm. going on. Like they'll do one bad thing and then they'll see them as like that. They'll see them as that bad thing forever. I don't think like that. I, I easily forgive and forget. And, you know, so sometimes I take issue with these people still like holding on to this resentment or whatever, but at the same time. Again, I understand we're not all the same. Mm -hmm. A lot of people hold on to shit. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, you okay, so you have this kind of disposition at least now or how you're doing things currently more or less, you, you have this thing where you think that people can make, uh, you know, mm. you can do bad, mm. you can forgive and forget. And I mean, yeah. that, you know, that's, I, I fundamentally think that's one of the best things that people can do. So props to you. But mm -hmm. why, why do you forgive and forget so easily? What's, what's going on with that? What do you chalk that up to? Well, it was actually an issue with me when I was younger. Um, I used to look around at everybody else and I'd see how easily someone could hold grudges. Mm -hmm. And I was just, I was always like, God damn, why can't I hold a grudge like these people? Yeah. Okay. I swear to God, that was something. I, that was a thought that I had all the time as a kid. Like, why? I wish I could. I wish I could hold a grudge like these kids. Oh, I wish wow. that I could be like. But I never could. I. I always seen through that. I seen to people's best traits, uh, and I just you know I, I, I've had, you know, my best friend. Um, I have two really close friends. Well, I mean, fuck, I have a lot of close friends, but I have two in particular that were really close at one point in my life 
And one of them was a massive fuck up drug addict <clears throat> who was always lying. <clears throat> and the other one is very honorable, but very touchy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, <clears throat> the guy, the other guy, fucked him over one time. Uh, the drug addict guy fucked over my touchy, honorable friend one time. And he said, I'm fucking done. Done with him. Ever since then, I've tried to get him together for years. He refuses. The drug addict guy's fucked me over literally like 10 times. Stop hanging out with him. And then four or five months later, he messages me. And I'm like, ah, yeah, I can't fucking hate you. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I yeah. don't know. <laughs> no, you, you know what's funny is I think often you've seen, and for those who watch, um, I'm saying this candidly. I can be a little bit of a crazy asshat sometimes. You know, I get I get enthused. I get passionate, and I guess the way that like I don't know. I guess what I'm saying is like you might not guess this about me, but I'm I'm very similar mm -hmm. actually. I think that I often have yeah no I see it. I see I've, it. I've really struggled to to have grudges. I think it honestly like mm -hmm. I don't know where you truly stand on this, but you know we've had issues in the past and stuff like that. And I think I don't have a grudge against you for any of that. And then I don't know if you yeah. have one against me, but I mean, well, it's, it's funny. I, I've even said before. I was thinking about this like a week ago. I was yeah. like, uh, I was like, man, yeah, Jonas being nice to me, and I thought about it. I was like, man, you know what? I wish I was one of these motherfuckers that could hold a grudge because I would fucking crush this guy. <laughs> like honestly, I had that thought yes. man. I was like, I would crush this guy. I would find a way. Uh, because I easily, like, I, I, I mean, I'm not saying I could crush you, but I could do something that would crush the average person. For and, sure. yeah. but I just can't because I actually do like you and I can't hold a grudge. So that is so interesting. That's like, I mean, I honestly feel whatever. I won't hamper on that too much, but that's just something mm -hmm. that is, you know, that at the end of the <laughs> session, whatever type I arrive at with you, that, that might play into some things here. Um, I don't know. Anyway, um, I guess something you brought up in that too is you were saying that you had, you know, a friend that was having some drug struggles. If I heard you correctly, yeah. Okay. So I've, um, I guess what I would ask then is like, you know, why did you feel the need to intervene when he was doing like the drug things? Like, what, what, maybe, what is your viewpoint on like people who are drug users? Like, give me a fleshed out answer about this. Oh God. Um. Well, I definitely don't like drug addicts. Uh, I don't like to put myself around them. Um, you know, I have OCD, so I have this uh, very hands-off approach to people nowadays. And I don't like drug addicts, man. I let that guy live with me for a while. It was a fucking mess. Absolute disaster. Um, the guy literally had fucking wolves in my garage. Yeah. Not even joking. Literal wolves, like oh wolf hybrid, like ninety percent, like <laughs> fucking timber wolf. Goodness. Yeah, and so it was hell, man. And um, yeah, I learned a lot about. I learned a lot through that experience. Uh, I definitely don't want uh, anything to do with drug addicts. You know, uh, however, he was my friend, and I didn't know he was on drugs. I knew he was in a fucked up situation. <laughs> uh, I I guess I completely just ignored the fact that he had two prior houses uh with roommates that ended up hating him and i just took his word for it because he was my friend mm -hmm. and uh fucking yeah definitely a mistake i think a lot of people a lot of my friends would would actually say like my honorable friend that i mentioned a minute ago he's like dude you you know he says that i see the best in people and i can be naive uh you know, and I think I've learned over the years, I've gotten a lot better at seeing through this shit like that. Um, nowadays, I probably wouldn't give the drug addict friend uh, as much of a second chance. But it, but if he if he showed me that he was off the shit, um, you know, I can't say I wouldn't. I probably would. Okay. But it would take a lot. I would, I would definitely be a lot harder to fool this time. So. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so what I'm going to ask now has a little bit to do with that, um, but in a maybe more in a way that could tell us more about your type, um, not just friendships and not just how you view, like, you know, just how you perceive people that are in your life. How specifically have romantic relationships <laughs> typically gone in your life? You can kind of give me a broad overview and then I'm going to ask some specific questions about this. 
Okay. Um, find girl. Uh, shit. I'm I'm gonna try to actually do this systematically. Okay. Find girl. Um, fall in love really fast. Mm-hmm. Um, or what I think is love. Uh, you know, um, put this big like ideal spin on it, and you know, uh, bond with this person. Uh, what ends up usually happening is, you know, everything is cool, but it can, it tends to, I don't know, it, it depends on the girl, man. Like, I've had girlfriends that were very respectable and, you know, uh, held up there into the bargain and was honest and loyal. And whenever I have a girl like that, it's like everything is great. You know, very few stuff ever happens. Yeah. Um, but if not, then lots of, yeah, I, I, I can have lots of, ah, motherfucker. Oh, my God. Holy shit. <laughs> I just had a toe cramp. You ever had one of those where your toe fucking, like, flies over the other one? Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. You kind of have to put it back in place. Yeah. I mean, okay, it's, I'm in, in a way. It. Yeah. We're falling apart. <laughs> We're going zombie mode, everybody. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, is everybody gone? Uh, wait, did they Welcome. really leap? Oh no no! I just met the uh, YouTube people. Oh <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Hey, yeah, let me. Okay, so yeah, I had a weird fear. Okay, we're still recording. Just double checking. Okay, you keep going. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, I think I can have uh, trust issues with women mm, okay. very very easily, just because I've dealt with that shit before. I don't know. Um, I. I don't know. I really do love relationships. I love the idea of being in a relationship and having them, having this, this woman as like my respite, you know, like my fire by the side of the road. You know what I mean? Uh, you go there and they kind of like make everything okay. And then you go back out into the world. <laughs> it's a really, really nice feeling. And yeah. Um, I had something specific I was going to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I can't remember what it was because I got that fucking cramp. That's fine. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Let's see. I want to ask you something. Uh, let's see. I guess what I'm trying to say here is like, first, something you said was you had girlfriends that you thought were respectable. What, mm-hmm. Why were they respectable? Um, loyalty, number one, very loyal. Uh, like there's never a worry that there's ever anybody else or ever even a remote interest in anybody else, like true loyalty. Um, I guess that's what I meant by respectable, to be honest. Loyalty to the point of like not making herself or me look silly, um, not uh, causing too many issues, not ever, ever, ever making me uh, not the most important factor in their life. Like, very loyal. I think that's mainly it. Let's see. One second. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a lot of other things that I like about women. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't classify them with like respect, like as a respectable. Yeah. Now, when you say that they're, they're kind of like, you know, uh, you said loyal and just respectful stuff, but you said that kind of they'll, they'll mm-hmm. look to you to lead or do what you say. Mm-hmm. Like how, how exactly do you do this in relationships? Like how, how does this transpire? Well, I just, hmm. I don't know. I think I'm very charming. This sounds fucking stupid saying this, but honestly, like I think I'm very charming with women, mm-hmm. um, and I think I I have a lot of charisma. I have a big personality, and I make women feel deeply for me, mm-hmm. easily, usually. And I think that once you have extreme loyalty and respect, like you can start 
kind of, oh God, I'm trying to think of ways to say this without sounding insane. You're totally um, right. You can, you can easily make them uh, kind of morph around you. Mm -hmm. I don't mean this in an unhealthy, terrible way, but like in a way that's actually genuinely very, you know, um, growth oriented. Uh, I tend to like mentor, I feel like girls, like I feel like I tend to try to be their dad a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that's just, I think that's just how relationships are supposed to be. This is why I, I think a relationship should be between a man who's slightly older than a woman. Yeah. Because there has to be some kind of <clears throat> respect. Like, ultimately, the woman is kind of looking at you as her father. And if you know anything about women in the modern day, then you know there's lots of issues with women and their fathers. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, it's, it's trying to correct a lot of the problems of their childhood. And so they need to kind of see me in this respectable lens and I need to teach them about things. If you look at it like evolutionarily, like, you know, uh, in an ancient hunter gatherer tribe or something, mm -hmm. the women would stay in the area with the children and the men would go out and hunt and war and all this stuff. And the men, right. Naturally, if, if people are going outside of the bounds of the territory, they're finding new, like novel, interesting things, new concepts, figuring out the world. And so yes. they come back and they share what they found. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot more natural, I think, for a woman to be shared to. And it's a lot more natural for a man to share with. And so I, I see this as, um, yeah, like a very clear kind of thing that I've done a lot in my life with before I ever even made this connection. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, let's see. I think I'm going to I'm going to do something very freaky here, something that I truly did not want to really do with much many typing sessions, but I am going to do this. I'm, I'm going to call me gay. No. You're going to insult me. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my goodness. But seriously. Oh, that's happened to me in typing sessions. I've had people literally like start fucking freaking out to see how I respond. Yeah. Like, uh, that shit's fucking weird. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to name any names <laughs> in the community, but it's just very frustrating to see a lot of people behave this way. That's why I even, yeah. you know, I, I, I have pleasant interactions with you. I always enjoy when we talk and just regular VCs mm -hmm. or this and that. But even if you were somebody that hated my guts and we didn't get along, I think that typing sessions <laughs> removed from that should be exactly like this, you know? For it's sure. So I like how people. formal you are about it, by the way. I really like how formal you are. It's nice. I'm in love with <laughs> formality. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, anyway, so I was going to try to ask, or what I'm going to do, it's kind of crazy. And you know what? If people watching this disagree with how I'm doing this, I don't care. Um Alexander, so where I've got to in this is I have some leanings, and I'm not going to say exactly where I'm doing the leaning, but I'm going to kind of slice this open and present to you some, I'm going to present to you kind of my semblance of us looking at this information element together of NI, and the reason I'm doing this is because you very clearly value it, but it is hard to assess that some of the, if some of the things you're doing, because at this point, I think it would be unrealistic for you to be IEI. I think it would be realistic for you to be LSI, and it really, you know, I mean, kind of what everybody always thought all along with you is it's EIE or SLE is really the only two things that could be for you. And what you you and I both knowing about the theory is that they both value an I, but one of them does it very poorly, and one of them does it pretty well. So it's mm -hmm. really hard for me to kind of gauge where this is because I've spoken to you before. I've spoken to how values are important. And like, you know, often one has no inclination to lie about their values and such. But with this, yep. with, with this thing, it's at the same time, it's like judging the strength on this. I see some points that, you know, I see some things that point to you doing this well. And then I see some things that point to you doing this poorly. Um, and what I want to do is essentially just kind of like, I don't know, ask you. Where do you think your NI usage is? You knowing good and well that what your answer, you know, what your answer will provide to me. And, you know, you don't know how much I'm going to gauge the truthfulness of you assessing your strengths. But I just like to hear candidly, yeah. you knowing about the theory, how good do you think your NI is? Not even going towards SLE or EIE, just how good do you think your NI is knowing what NI is? <laughs> 
I think the meme of NI, I have very good. Mm -hmm. Like the meme of what NI is. <laughs> Which is like, um, uh, 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 finding meaning for things, mm -hmm. like in an abstract way. Uh, but I don't think that's the full scope of NI. I think probably anyone who values NI, uh, eventually, if they wish to do that, they can do that well. <laughs> in fact, I remember being like 20, 22, 21 years old. Yes. And I had this friend, Danny, and he would come over and we'd watch movies together. And he was like a big fucking cinemaphile. <clears throat> and so um, I had another friend as well uh, who uh, would come over. And we watched this stuff and <clears throat> uh, they wanted to start a YouTube channel together and like break down movies. And I just found it so interesting. Like I didn't, I didn't know how, how to break anything down. I didn't know how to cultivate meaning from these movies. I didn't, I didn't think about it. I didn't care to, I just, I, I like, I wanted to watch the movie and I liked things of it, um, uh, different archetypes and stuff like that. But I never thought about it. I never like it, it never, nothing. There was never like a, the NI clicking in my head until later on when I got, into politics and uh, I started studying a lot of what's going on under the scene and, and I started you know, watching all of these schizophrenic YouTubers who are like, oh, the Pope is, you know, uh, demonic or whatever. And they start having all these different, <clears throat> like, sources from ancient times and, oh, it's prophetic and this and that. And you start to see the symbology and you start to develop a real knack for finding meaning in things. And so I don't think that I had that object, like no bullshit. I'm not trying to be a type. I don't think I had that I until I was like 21, 22. And, um, but I think, uh, what NI actually is, mm -hmm. I don't think I do all that well, uh, which is like relating through time. And like, um, like I think, uh, I'm late to everything. Mm -hmm. I've never, ever, ever arrived on time for anything in my life. I put things off. I'm very, uh, I don't know how I would say it. Like, I, for things that I want, I'm like obsessed and I, I'm like leaping out of bed in the morning. But for things that I don't want, like, I simply cannot. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's just, this is the problem with like NI and socionics. It fucking conflates so much stuff with it. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'll leave that up to your interpretation. Okay, just one quick moment. Let's see. Um, give me like twenty more seconds. Let's see. One, give me like 10 seconds. Yeah, take your time. Okay. All right, so then we'll move on to some other stuff. <laughs> that actually provided me with a lot. Cool. All right. Mm, let's see. What are some other things that I would like to know about you, Alexander? Hmm. Okay, let's move into this. Um, what do you like in a leadership position exactly? Like, I, I think I kind of, I think I can kind of guess the second part for you, but if I have any surprises, I don't know. But, uh, like, do you like leadership positions? Uh, and if so, why or why not? Hmm. <laughs> Um, if there's a leader over me, I want them to give me free reign. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't want them to constrict me. I don't want micromanagement. I just want to be able to do as much, as much, like, I, I want to have as much freedom as I can. I just don't want to be too constrained. <laughs> um, 
I have no problem like deferring to other people for leadership or whatever. As long as they, like I said, as long as they can just let me do me. Like, that's it. That's all I really care about. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I, I like being, I like being a leader. I think I'm just a natural leader. I've talked about this on here before, but like when I was in school back in the day, back in the nineties, they had, uh, these fucking, like on your report cards, they would put if you're a leader or a follower, which is insane nowadays. You tell Gen Z kids that they're like, what the fuck? But that was a thing back in the day, dude. Yeah. Like ancient Sparta. And uh, yeah, I was always a leader. The only time I was ever, a, like, it was like four or five years they did it probably. And, and I was a leader on all of them except one time, one report card I was a follower. And that's because I was on like a fucking heroic dose of Ritalin. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't even think I was there. But, um, but yeah. So I like, I, I just naturally, I don't know. I naturally lead. Like I'm just a natural leader. I think, I think that, um, I don't even realize that I'm leading when I'm doing it, but I am. And I would say that even in this community, um, I, I tend to like start little trends and shit like that. I don't even realize it's a thing until it is for like a week. And I'm like, Oh shit. I started that. I did that. Like, uh, these people are interested in things that I'm interested in. Maybe it's because I've conveyed it in a way that, you know, uh, makes it sound enticing. Um, yeah, I think I'm a natural leader. All right, one second. Let's see. <laughs> Okay, give me like 20 more seconds. Mm -hmm. um, you're cool, dude. I know you're taking notes. Yeah. Let's see. All right. Okay, so we'll move on to some other stuff now. Um, let me make sure if there was any parts of that question that like I felt as though got an answer because I was typing something long, and I I kind of just put you know I think I think you if like if I were to get typed and somebody was typing everything I'm not a fast typer and we both talk a lot we like to do that so I'm like ah I'm not a very fast typer but what's cool about this is I you know I'm good at I'm good at shortening things down so essentially I shortened down I think what I needed to get out of that one but I'm just gonna go over. My question to see if I have any other parts of that that I really want answered. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I guess, like, I mean, you pretty much touched on everything that I wanted from that one. So that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, what, okay. So this is another one I would like to ask you. Um, how competitive are you, would you say? Um, I'm either all the way in or all the way out. Mm hmm. So, like, I know there's, like, stories. I remember hearing stories about, like, Michael Jordan playing ping pong. And he's, like, <laughs> so obsessed he can't lose. And if he does lose, then he's going to practice ping pong every day for, like, three months and come back. Um, so, like, yeah, like, I, I get really butthurt if I lose. I don't like losing. Um, but at the same time, that's only about shit that I care about. If I don't value uh, me being the best at something in a moment, then I can happily lose and not care. Mm -hmm. An example is like bowling. I remember last uh, I went bowling. Last time I went bowling, I, I got fucking smoked. And I didn't care. I didn't care at all. Mm -hmm. and I was like yeah. goofing halfway through, you know, drinking beer. Like it, it wasn't a big deal. But if I went in there with the intention of, like, I'm going to be the bowler, like, if I would have lost, I'd be fucking furious. I'd be making excuses. Mm -hmm. I'm a sore loser. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Hmm. <laughs> 
a second. Let's see. All right, give me like 20 more seconds. All right, give me like 10 more seconds. Okay. All right, five more seconds. Sorry, man. <laughs> that is... You're fine, man. Okay. And you know what's another thing I've noticed too is with Blockoman's answers, and I'm, for my viewers again, I'm not gonna try to say, oh, and for this person, this person, because y'all may just see this and never fucking watch the other video. Um, if that's the case. Then so be it. But I just for you. No, they gotta watch. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, my man over here. He's he's uh. Maybe you are. Maybe you're a T Dom. Smart. But the uh, I what I'm trying to say to you at least is with Blocko Man session, man. I really was putting in a lot. I was putting in a lot of jots, if you will. You know, I was saying this shows this information element. This shows all the things I probe for. All the things I probe for and how I really do this thing. But with yours, I mean, I have a lot of these too, but it's really, I, I am putting more stuff into, like, your stories. I'm putting more stuff into this, and it, it is all, is everything is really starting to come together, honestly. I mean, I, I think that this Based. is, it's, it's, it's really, really, really coming together. And I want to ask a lot more questions, if you're willing, you know, it is 3.45 a.m., <laughs> but I am not tired at all. So if you want to keep this rolling and have a really, like, just good session, a long session, if you will. I'm down to keep mm -hmm. doing this, even though I'm, yeah, I'm like getting I'm to an area of confidence. But we'll just, we'll yeah. really nail it in. We'll make sure that I, whatever I give you, is what I truly think you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. This is pretty awesome. All right, so let's get some more. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's see. I want you to do something else for me that's type based. I think I like talking typology with you, and it helps me get to know you better. Honestly, it sure. it helps me get to know you better and get to your type. You we often talk about my type sometimes too, and other people's types and every stuff like that in the community. But it's me and you talking right now, and these people are watching my channel and listening to you being interviewed. So, you believe that I am SEE right now, correct? In model A. Uh, yeah, probably. Model A is the one that I sure I use awesome. usually. Yeah, yeah me um, too. probably, but but I mean, I could see some arguments for other things. So how about you do this? How about first and foremost, you tell me why, based on every single interaction with me, that I would be SEE. I want you to try to you you could say convince me, I guess, but really, I just want me you to tell me why you think I am SEE. Uh, I think you're probably. SEE because you're very socially strong. Like um, even the way that you communicate, the way that you hold court, it's very. Um, how would I say it? It's different than someone like Lamb, right? Like Lamb is like enchanting people. <laughs> oh my fucking god! I love that. Also, yeah, he's like anyway. Yeah, let's. I love that. I love that. I think I think more lamb examples great because I think we're we're trying to do type stuff correctly. This other guy is, was being really nasty to me in DMs earlier, and I hate to bring all that to YouTube, but it's just again, yeah, you know, it's you're doing cool is. things. I hate to hijack your question, but I just thought that was funny. You you keep going, man. You're fine. You're fine. Yeah. Um, even what you just did, like I feel like that's even kind of like SEFI. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, I think like someone like him, right, and a lot. You know, he, he's kind of a, he has the power of the word, right? He's like enchanting people with some hidden knowledge. He's, he's bringing it to the masses. Um, but you, that's not what you're doing. 
you're just really, really good at filling space. And um, I, that's usually a skill that I see with SEs. Usually they're very, very good at like filling social space uh, and making everything entertaining and happy and chill for everyone involved. So I think you're good at that. Um, I know in our beefs in the past, I felt like you always kind of, uh, uh, I feel like you kind of had the upper hand in a lot of them. Uh, because they were in a social arena and I could tell the truth. You know, I could say like, I, you know, this, 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 and this, mm -hmm. and I could be completely right. But then you would DM like three or four people and I lose. Like, it doesn't matter what I say because you're more connected and, um, you cater to, uh, social connections. Yeah. I think, uh, better than I do. Okay. Or maybe I could do it well. But I just, I don't think to do that. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, again, I can see arguments for other types as well, but oh, totally that, that would be my main reason for uh, yeah. SE. Yeah, cause I, and, and to keep it transparent with my viewers as well, because I, I, make, I may make at some point a video explaining exactly how I assess myself. Maybe y'all get to know me a little bit. I, at the very moment, self-identify, or self-type, excuse me. Excuse me very much. I don't want to say identify, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> he, him. Whoa, yeah. Anyway. Um, I self-type as SLE currently. I self-typed as SEE for a while when I, like, I don't know. My understanding of the theory was very basic. Um, at least how I interpret the theory right now, I believe myself to be SLE. Alexander obviously thinks I'm SEE, and we can talk about these things objectively, and I like that. And the whole point of me asking you that question is just kind of, you know, just to see where you stand on that. Not for yeah. me personally, but just kind of, you know, seeing how you were. See were, the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. I think you did touch on something we could kind of get into as well. You could use me as a specific example if you wanted to cite instances, or you could use other people in the community or just other people in your life. But how, like, when you when you engage in these conflicts with people, like, take me from start to finish. What's going on in the mind of Alexander when you're, you know, back when, you know, we would argue and I would say this, you would say that, uh, you know, or you and other people. Like, what is con conflict like for you in your head? I just felt like, um, Everybody was just narrative maxing, and I couldn't. It was it was too late. If I wanted to if I wanted to try to spin a narrative, it's like mm. I I was I was just behind the times. Like uh, our buddy had already gotten there, uh, spreading many many narratives about me. Yeah, uh, I think you also joined in, and uh, there was a bit of subtle manipulation here and there, and so. Yeah, I never really had a chance. I just think um, sometimes I, I've always said that I try to go into situations, <laughs> any conflict, like open palm, right? Like hands to the sky, like, hey, let's, let's, let's meet in the middle. Let's handle this honorably. Let's figure it out. And then other people are, ten they tend to undercut a bit. And I have no problem with that, you know? In fact, I kind of admire it. And I wish that was my natural disposition sometimes, but... But it's not, and so yeah, I feel like I really had no chance. <clears throat> okay. You know, maybe see in real life, maybe where there's a lot more than just your voice and whatever <laughs> and, and past yeah. things that you've typed yeah. to go on. Maybe I would have had a better chance, but on the internet, no, nah, I was out of my element. <laughs> sure. Let's see. Okay. All right, so let's see. With that one, you were more or less saying that everybody was kind of just perpetuating this narrative about you, and you felt as though you didn't. You were like, "Wow, this, this I would have to probably overcome this massive obstacle to even have even have a fighting chance." It's like not even yeah. certain, right? Yeah, I, I get what you yeah. mean. I, I understand what you mean. I tried a few times. Yeah, I tried a few times. There, I I really couldn't get a foothold. Like it, it didn't matter. At, at some point, there's always something in the past. Oh, you did this six months ago. You did that a year and a half ago. So it was over. It was over before it began. <laughs> okay. All right. 
So with that being said, okay, so said, then you said that you feel as though you don't like when people are like this to you. And I was I was going to ask a quick question, so just try to give me a quick answer. Earlier when you were saying that you felt as though when you were, you know, when you first came into the community, you were saying stuff and you felt like that people treated you this way. And you said, that, I was like, do you think that was unfair? And you said that you didn't feel like that was unfair back then, <laughs> right? right? Okay, so right. with this, do you feel as though, because you were saying that you feel as though when people undercut or when you don't have, like, I guess a fair shake in this, then you kind of are just like, whatever. So do you feel as this is unfair that people treated you like this way and did this narrative, and why? I feel like it's just weak. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think it's unfair, like, you know, all fair in love and war. It's just, I, I think... I think what men do, right, is we is we have this secret code. Yeah. I used to talk about this all the time. Like, uh, back in the day, I remember, like, when uh, Vine was popular and shit. And there were these Vines of, like, these shirtless, muscular, like, baby-oiled dudes. Yeah. And they would, like, and they would do these dances where they would, like, hump the floor in unison and shit. I'm sure you've seen this. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> Um, I said it's our like. There's like a hidden agreement with men yes. uh, that if you that you don't go beyond a certain area in the sexual hierarchy, mm -hmm. and if you do that, and you're not playing within like the rules that we've kind of unconsciously set for ourselves, selves, yes. then it's everyone else's responsibility to call you gay. <laughs> so yeah, if you're humping the floor, we're gonna call you gay, or a try hard, or whatever, mm -hmm. and so. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's similar for uh, that situation. Like, there's sort of social rules as well. And if you're not falling in line, then I'm going to say that, that you're weak or you're dishonorable or you're pathetic or gay. Uh, but And I hope that other men will also look at the same situation and be like, yeah, that makes sense. I agree. Um, so it's not that it's unfair. It's just, I don't know, I feel like it's violating... Uh, an unconscious, like, unconscious, unwritten rule. Okay. Let's see. One more second. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. All right. So, um, I think what I want to ask you after that is, you, you know, you, you gave me your answer on that one. I very much understood. But then you said that you feel as though it's weak when people undercut a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you also, you did include me in these group of people with this stuff mm -hmm. and, and stuff like this. So like, I guess a two part question, you can answer this in whichever way you'd like, like, I guess, me, I don't even want to say me back then because I, I am responsible for everything I have done. Do you view me mm -hmm. as an undercutter and do you view me as weak? Um, no, I feel like there's certain, again, like I said, I don't hold people to uh, ask for the absolute worst moments. Yeah. And I feel like maybe then you, you know, and just talking to you before, I kind of know that you weren't really on the same paradigm yeah. as you are now. You're looking at Discord as as, a, as something else, um, and now you see it as, you know, something maybe a little more serious, maybe yes. something that could help you or profit you in the future. So, so yeah, like I think your view is just different now, and yeah, you know, mine of you is definitely different. So I'm not gonna, like I said, I'm not gonna hold it against you. Okay. So no, so no, I don't, I don't think, I don't think so. I think the tactic is weak, and if you did it again, I would think, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah. Yeah, that makes total sense. Um, and then I guess, I, I, I mean, you really answered the important part of that. I, I got what I needed out of that. But I, would you say <laughs> that, I, this is kind of fun, too. Because um, obviously, like, I mean, you know, I could be lying, you could be lying, whatever. But I, I really do not have any intention to be all fucking erratic anymore like that. So I, I wouldn't expect that from your end. But what I would say is that uh, you also said that these people undercut you. Again, I'm kind of lumped into this. So this is probably less of a character attack. I'm just curious to how you perceive how I do things. Would you say that I'm an undercutter? Um... 
I would say you definitely do some low blows. You play dirty. Uh, socially. And I think I'm capable of doing things like that. But it's not my go-to, if that makes sense. Wait a minute. I, I'm I, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna be transparent again. Y'all probably can hear mm -hmm. it in the video. Some random ass music started playing on my Spotify, so I'm gonna close that down. It was only for a couple seconds. Recording. I didn't hear it. No, no. I'm just Maybe saying on did. my on, no because I'm not streaming or anything. There's oh, no way you okay. I got gotcha. you. I'm just saying gotcha. for me personally, while you were answering, I completely tuned out to close that out. So how about you? Can you can you answer that again for me, please? I heard some mm -hmm. of it, but just repeat if you will. Yeah, if I can remember, I said um. All right. Fuck, what did it? What was well, the you, question? Okay, again? So, uh, yeah, we'll walk it back. Let's see. Let me actually type the question out. Normally, I kind of ask and then I'm typing as I go, but yeah. So, I was asking, mm -hmm. you know, to keep it shorter, would you say that I'm an undercutter, even like now? And you were kind of saying some of the tactics I do are low, and that's really all I heard before music <laughs> craziness. I did, yeah. Oh, um, so yeah, I think I'm an undercutter. Natural, yeah, it's like a natural. I think it's a natural element of uh, of your personality. Like I think, yeah, you you're just socially skilled. Yes. Yeah, and I think that you. Um, I don't know. It's like naturally, if you're, it's like I think I have a lot of the same social skill, mm -hmm. but I just don't. I don't default to. I don't default to like uh, ripping people to shreds. I kind of, uh, I prefer, I guess, maybe even to teach lessons. Yeah. If you want to put it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Sometimes I can be just completely spiteful and, venge and fucking full of vengeance and rage, though, to be fair. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I'm sorry. I don't know if you said I don't know if you said anything, but oh, no, um, everything should as soon be as mm -hmm. Okay, as soon as I said that I dropped my phone, my headphones came out, so Oh lord, yeah, no, we're all we're smooth sailing. Cool. Let me type this one thing. Let's see. Okay, give me like twenty more seconds. Yep. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. Uh. Okay. All right, so my next question for you is going to be, how do you handle things that you deem to seem, or that you deem as impossible? Do you, and how do you know when to give up exactly in circumstances like that? Or do you give up? How does this all transpire with you? Hmm. Things are deemed to be impossible. That, that you, yeah. Hmm. Well, if I really feel like it's impossible, then I'm probably not going to do it. <laughs> well, how about uh, I'm, I'm typing this part of the, mm -hmm. this, it's like a second part out right now. I was going to ask you afterwards, but I'll ask you right now, just so we can be on the same page. How would you define mm -hmm. impossible? Hmm. I guess it depends on the context. Uh, if it's like a goal, then I would say it's something that's outside the bounds of reality like it's not uh it's outside the bounds of like our universal laws mm -hmm. um but i ultimately feel like i can do anything as long as you know again like as sure as gravity is holding my feet down like i feel like i can do whatever uh i want ultimately in the grand scheme as long as as long as it doesn't defy reality if it defies reality then yeah, I think that's that's where I'd obviously draw a line and say something would be impossible. Okay. 
One I don't know if I explained that the right way, but... Oh, perfectly. <laughs> Let's see. I feel capable, though. You know? Mm -hmm. I really feel capable. I feel like... I've always felt like if I set, if I set my mind to something, I, I can do anything. But I tend to do this thing where I set my mind to something, yeah. and I run head on, mm -hmm. and then I realize it's not actually what I wanted, and then I'll go pick a new thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Give me one moment. Mm -hmm. All right, give me 10 more seconds. 10, 9. Oh, you could, uh, do it, do it, actually. 5, 4, <laughs> 3, 2, 1. Ding, ding, ding. Okay. That Actually, you could not have timed that more perfectly. I'm ready. All right, so awesome. what, next question. I think what was cool about that, too, that, that thing we just did, I honestly I was like, I'm probably going to type this slower unless somebody counts me down. So he literally, <laughs> I was slagging. I was like, fuck, yeah. I'm not going to make it out. And we're mm -hmm. good. All right. Um, in your mind, and I. For sure. You, you, you know what? You, I, I am not bullshitting you. If I was streaming you right now, you'd probably be freaked out. But I literally, I have, again, I have my type in methodology. It's questions that I've crafted and some of the off cuff, the stuff, off the cuff stuff too. Oh my goodness. But I am going to the NI section right now because I want to probe for that a little bit more. And you said that and I just thought that was funny. You knew exactly that what was. That was NI. Yeah, it was NI as well. <laughs> so is it strong or is it... It had to be ah. me. <laughs> but it had anyway, to be me. Yeah. So essentially, I think that this is a, a, a the fact that I detailed again to you that I am on the NI part this is a thing. This is a thing that we can be transparent about again because we 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 are talking to each other and we can kind of work together on this. I, I see this less of me trying to be like, hmm, I'm gonna thwart you because I kind of already know your type at this point, and I'm kind of wanting you to work with me, and I want you to understand that again, uh, stuff that is val. We both acknowledge that you value and I. This is, or at least it is very likely, you know, I think that I, I'm basically confirming to you that the in type socionics. Of, yeah, definitely. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Anyway, that yeah. yeah, imagine some actually, actually person in the comments yeah. saved my ass anyway. Um, but yeah, I can talk with you about the NI stuff because I've made it very clear that if nobody has really has much reason to lie about stuff that I would consider what, you know, the values and everything, but it's the strength is where we can kind of, I don't know if you're being real. So I'm, <laughs> I'm being candid with my in, I'm being candid that I, these are going to be like an NI question and I'm, I'm dissecting it again. You know, I think that I'm not going to yep. do this honestly with anybody else, but you and maybe a, a people in a similar situation to you, because I genuinely think finding out how good or bad your NI here is, is so crucial. But what's funny is I've made you very well aware that what you tell me, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to hear what you say. I'm going to type it all down. But how I read this is not necessarily going to be taking everything you say at, you know, as, as its truth, I'm going to read through it and I'm going to make my own personal assessment based on how I think the strength of your NI manifest here. So I'm just simply going to pick one of these questions and I'm going to read it to you. <laughs> okay. Yep. Let's do it. Let's see. Ooh, actually, um, I'll pick up. Whenever out you do that laugh, whenever you do that laugh, you remind me of somebody. Oh, goodness. I'm trying so hard to remember who it is. Who the fuck is it? It's the exact same laugh. I'll think of it later. Fuck it. Okay. Um. Let's see. What would you? Mm, I don't know. I get. I guess we can kind of tie it back to the beginning, if you will, because I, I really think we're almost about done. Let's see how long has this been. 
Yeah, it's been about an hour, but really yours was a lot easier than Bakuman's. We're just going to kind of do this to do, ask a couple more questions just to kind of eliminate some stuff, and I think I might have your type in a second. But essentially, we it, it, towards the beginning of the session, we're talking about your... Uh, we were talking about your past and stuff like that and kind of your past and now and stuff like this. So I, you kind of gave me a goal, you know, you said that you did this, you went to school, you had a lot of friends and stuff like that. But I know just based on, you know, what we've talked about and obviously you kind of left off at about like an age in your life, like, you know, I think you were like 21 or 22. So I don't really know the big picture of what happened, you know, 22 to now. So detail this part of your life for me, if you will. Yeah, so I have a uh, OCD. Okay. Uh, I think I've I think I've had it for my whole life, probably. I remember when I was like five or six years old, having weird little moments where uh, I would count things weird, or I would take weird steps over cracks in certain ways, or whatever. And yeah. I remember thinking like I felt like an alien. I felt like I was the only person in the world that had it. Uh, as I got older, I realized that was an actual thing. <laughs> uh, it didn't ever really affect me negatively. Uh, until uh, sort of somewhat traumatic event in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. It kind of fucked me up a little bit. Sure. And so, yeah, then I started, uh, you know, um, uh, what would I call it? Like, I started kind of bunkering down in the house a bit and uh, not going outside, touching grass. And I think it just turned me weird. And I became very weird and insular and quiet and creeped out and mm -hmm. touchy feely. Not touchy feely, actually. Like I don't want anybody near me. Yeah. And so, so yeah, I think that that, um, I think it caused some problems. And yeah, I feel like that it just it, it made me. I didn't really know who I was. I kind of lost track of who I was, I think. Um, and funnily enough, I feel like typology has kind, kind of helped me figure it out. Mm -hmm. Not typology in and of itself, uh, but talking to people. Uh, because there was a time where I wasn't really out and about at all. And I think getting on here and kind of like spurging and just going ape shit for like three or four months straight. Uh, I slowly started to realize, like, oh, wait a minute. What the fuck am I doing? Like, look at how I'm talking to these people. Look at how I'm acting. And, yeah, I think it kind of brought me back to reality. Okay. So, um, so, yeah. All right. Give me one moment. Mm -hmm. Let's see. It's a work in progress yeah. as well. But coming along smoothly. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I I'm on. Honestly, I'm I'm kind of almost done. Let me let me just scroll through this, see if there's any things I left unturned, and we're about to have a type for you. <laughs> and what's funny too, okay. Alexander, I have. I, I feel like we played a couple games through this. It's been pretty cool. Um. I, uh, the way I did it with Bakuman, how I'm going to do it with you, I'm going to do it with everybody, is at the very end of my session, I am going to say, Alexander, before I give you your type, what type do you think I am going to type you? <laughs> and that's going to be super fun. So you can start thinking about that now. But I I'm gonna, I think I'm going to ask you for one question, one more question just for finality. I'm not sure what exactly I want to ask. So just be thinking about that question, hang tight, and we're about to have your type. Sure. Okay. Let's see. Which one will be the killer? Alright. Here we go. I got it. I know what I want to ask you. Alexander, you know, you were saying that you have started multiple businesses and stuff like that, and, and this has happened in your past, and you kind of aspire to do some things like this in the future, correct? Yeah. Okay, so why don't you last, this is going to be your last question, and then I will literally give you your type after we do the, you know, the guessing, but uh, why don't you kind of like detail me uh, exactly how some of these businesses went for you? Like, like what, what, 
just give me the rundown on like some of these things. You don't have to be too specific, but you could just mm -hmm. just give me the rundown. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll go through my last one, I guess. So the last one was a, a movie theater. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a black friend from high school. Um, we always knew that we would start businesses together and stuff. Wait, I'm sorry. You said you got. It. I'm so sorry to cut off. Just so mm -hmm. I can understand. You said you. Uh, you said the last one was a movie theater. You said what yeah. with a friend from high school? Yeah, yeah. I said um, it was a movie theater that I co-owned with my best friend okay. from high school. One of my best friends. So we always knew that we would be entrepreneurs. We always knew that we'd go into business together. Mm -hmm. And uh, we finally did. And so we <laughs> rented out uh, 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 a building that was an old theater, one screen movie theater, 300 and six seats i think it was really compact and cool <clears throat> um, had a bunch of old shaggy carpet in the top literally from like the 70s it was awesome um really old and we completely renovated it so we rented the space renovated um <clears throat> i got on social media mm -hmm. i started announcing that the theater was back open everybody went ape shit. it was like a critical success at least on like uh, promotions and marketing stand uh, standpoint. Yeah. And yeah, so uh, we basically blue balled everybody uh, on social media for like fucking three months for a grand opening. Yeah. Um, we we like to um, we like to do things. We like we didn't like to we like to do shortcuts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we, I know that so many other people would have spent way more money like getting that place renovated, getting ready for a grand opening. Yeah. But we we were as like frugal as possible. And it's actually comical almost <clears throat> the way that we did it. Because it was like shoddy as fuck, yeah. to be honest. But but we made it work and um and so yeah, so we hit the ground running, got the uh theater up and running, um started bringing in a decent profit yeah uh yeah so everything was going really well got evaluated uh we were going to make a lot of money if we sold it but we decided to keep it all of a sudden somebody started coughing in china and as you know the world <laughs> died <laughs> and so the uh the massive profit we would have made if we sold it completely went to dog shit oh man and yeah. so uh we were able to ride out the pandemic though uh, by doing little promotions and stuff like that, just trying to be creative. Yeah. Um, get people in there, I, I guess, like get their sympathies and stuff. But it worked, and we were able to make it through the pandemic, and then we sold it at the end of the pandemic. Uh, we came out uh, making a little bit of money, a little bit more than we had put in, but definitely wasn't worth all the trouble. But I know that if the pandemic didn't happen, we would have returned, fuck, so much on investment, like a lot. We would have made a lot of money. Sure, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be on Discord. I can tell you that. I would be like in California. <laughs> Let's see. One second. Okay. Wonderful. Um. And I, I, I kind of lied. I guess I do have one last question for that. It just hit me. I guess you said that it, you said that it was uh, profiting at first and all that stuff. Um, and you said that you know. So I'm assuming you, you market and everything. How did you market it exactly? Like guerrilla marketing, uh, Facebook advertising, Facebook page, Instagram, uh, everything. Local businesses, um, we did fund, ran multiple fundraisers, GoFundMe. Um, we did, we organized a, uh, a local event with like 12 different local businesses in the little area that we were in. Yes. A bunch of people went out, um, made a good amount of money that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, just guerrilla marketing, just, just all in on the marketing pretty much. Okay. But very, very cheap as well. Like, we didn't want to spend a lot of money. Because yeah. we really couldn't. Okay. Alright, one second.
Do you want to know what I was doing just now? And you'll see it on the video if it's recording properly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm a fucking nut. Um, I was just realizing that I can, instead of having the, the call show, and especially because at the end it's not important to see who's talking because we're about to conclude and it's only us talking, I was just like, I need to bump my server. So I'm doing that. And I'm like, I should type something in that says to everybody, please like, uh, let's see, please like, join my server, and subscribe. Oh, we'll do like the video. Hold on video join my server and subscribe i was typing in all caps and i did a big old winky face and you'll see it if when, if or when you watch the video maybe you don't want to watch it but i have your type i'll That's watch what's it important. i'll check it <laughs> okay so last question for you what type do you think i'm gonna type you um probably sle because there's one moment earlier i remembered um just based on what you think your type is where it was kind of just like a ah uh, uh, moment between us. I don't remember. I don't remember what it was, but probably SLE. But I wouldn't be surprised if it were yeah, one or the other. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I I did a pretty big document for you. I, I take I took note of a lot of things. I took factors <laughs> into what you said here. Um, I took factors into. All of that stuff that you said today, but really, I, I did a lot of thinking, too, about past occurrences and stuff like that. I used that in tandem with this, and that may be a little flawed, but I'm so certain about your type at this point that it doesn't even matter. It's really everything mm -hmm. checks out. I think, Alexander, yeah. honestly, I think you're SLE. Okay. Yep, and that is your type. <laughs> That's what I give you. So you want to talk Based. about a little bit? Yeah, sure. Okay. So... We can kind of we can kind of backtrack. I know your memory struggle. You know you have memory struggles sometimes, self admittedly. Uh, so I don't yes. know if you specifically remembered, but what? Let's go back a little bit. I'm just curious. So what made you think that I was going to type you SLE? And I know I know I asked you this, but like, what do you remember? Like maybe I could think a little more on it. Yeah. yeah. There. Uh, I, don't, just kind of I don't. Like I said, I don't logic necessarily here. remember. Okay. But there was one moment where it was early on i think you were asking you were probing for like fi yeah and um there was like this ah uh, yes he he, looks at my he doesn't over. hold grudges or something it was a very specific thing that i said i think and mm. yeah i think it was around that moment that i was just like okay All right and maybe it wasn't the fi i think it was I don't. I think it might have been like the uh, the ni question. I don't. I don't remember. But I, I feel like you you see my point. This was this has been my point for the longest time. Is like the ni. I feel like people don't really know yeah. what that is. You know, Alexander. What your, like point, people, what your yeah. point all along, honestly, has been is that you feel as though people are just kind of making this meme out of you and the stuff, and they're they're also making a meme out of EIE typing. And what's essentially has occurred here, and you can tell me if you agree or disagree disagree with the statement is is the fact that essentially what has happened is people have gotten so caught up in just what you are in this community and i think truly they are caught up in so much of like what they believe to be eie but there's some there's yeah. some failings there that they through not really misunderstanding the theory all that much but not getting to know you as well I think that right. a lot of people get perturbed by what you do, and I think that immediately yeah. they start thinking certain things. And I think what mm -hmm. happens when they think certain things, they are not they have removed themselves from the socionics theory altogether. I think that yeah. this, at this point they have essentially, you know, threw that out the window and said I'm going to attack you. So obviously mm -hmm. if you self-type as one type uh or even if you leave it ambiguous and they kind of just sense that you would want to be this one more or you, this one make more sense. And we've talked about that before, too, how, you know, a want for a certain type or certain things like this. It's like we can we can, you know, all everybody in my server, we're kind of working on what does this all really mean? How can we be more accurate? Yeah. But uh, I don't know, man. It's just it's, it's a very interesting thing to see how that transpires and how it's kind of been a journey. It sort of seems to like, you know, cause I've, I've known you for a little bit now and just seeing the back and forth. And I have, you know, I've had my opinions I've had my changes and I, you know, again, we remember when I knew, you know, very little about socionics. I perceived things differently when our preliminary typing mm -hmm. session, which I leaned SLE back then. I, I thought more EIE afterwards. Uh, and mm -hmm. then, from then so on and so forth, there'd be days in which we'd interact. And I'd be like, I think I see some arguments for SLE, but honestly, right. going into it today, 
I think it's even two times today somebody has asked what I truly think you are. It might have been because I brought up that I'm typing you, or maybe not. I don't know. But I know in both of these circumstances, I thought about it, and I said it's really close, but I lean EIE right now, honestly, based on my interactions holistically before this mm -hmm. and the preliminaries typing session. So I went into this. I, I don't want to say – or no, I told you all this. What am I saying? I, t I think I told you this before yeah. the session. Yeah, okay. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway. I just think it's cool. I think it's cool that genuinely it's it's the way to go about this is just to find out this per this person's entire life story. And this isn't your entire life story, mm -hmm. but just find out what's really useful to know there and then type based on that. Anybody else who is For doing sure. it differently, I just disagree with. Um, yeah. And I mean, I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Like a lot of these people, um, just thinking back, like I, I've been like, look, realistically, I'm not saying this to try to victimize myself. I've been fucking gaslit, like fucking match and kerosene type shit, dude. Yes. Like so many, so many times in this community by people. But again, I get it. Like I, I, I get why. I guess for some people, there are certain things that I do see are are kind of like unethical. Yeah. Um, trying like gaslighting someone about like who they are as a person when you yeah. fucking don't know, you don't know them from Adam. Yeah. Ultimately, you just know like what they show you in certain communication on the internet. When yeah. you know that type of shit, that kind of bothers me. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, I don't know, man. I've just been I've been told all kinds of shit. And like I said, the first time I was ever typed in Socionics, it was it was SLE, and they were like, "Yeah, I'm like 100 percent sure." And so I I went into the community like I don't know anything about this shit, but I mm -hmm. guess I'm this type and they're just like yes. you fucking retard you fucking idiot he wants to be fucking cool look at how cool he is it's very yeah, disappointing because so, at least yeah. i'm gonna ask you to at least kind of go on my line of logic and you know i know you believe i'm see and i always believe that everybody can have their own opinions but it, where i stand at least i believe i'm sle and what's funny about that is i often view the exact same way with myself i often think that what's frustrating about this stuff is with whether you if you're even just the slightest bit antagonistic in any sort of endeavor amongst these amidst these typology people um, yeah. this, I'm not. I'm, and I'm not trying to have a cry fest here too. It's just we've had no, you're cool. pretty much all day. We've had a lot of discussion about just what what it means to be accurately typing people and stuff like this. So what's cool is I'm looking at the situation. You know, I'm looking at what maybe you have gone through in this community with type confusion. Mm -hmm. I have gone through type confusion. It's been a little different because I mean I've gotten the EIE. Maybe you have as well. But I think really the things at play for you and my word is not law. Everybody else can disagree with me. Everybody else can say whatever. But I personally, like with you, it is like it's really clearly was never anything but SLE and EIE once I learned stuff about the theory. And now now I really feel like I'm yeah. getting far along. I feel like I'm getting far along and based That's on good, that, your SLE. Um, and then with me, of course, it's I, I truly believe that the two most likely types for myself is SLE and SEE. But going off of me understanding the theory correctly, typing myself SLE personally... Um, I've, I've often dealt with a similar thing in which it's frustrating to try to convey to people that you are not trying to be this type to try to be a badass. And whether you are or not, it's kind of it can work both ways, dude. I think I have more of an approach of trying to convince people that I'm SLE because I it's like I want people to view this thing fundamentally different. I think that it's flawed to look for the strengths. I think that's flawed to look for all that stuff exactly how people do it nowadays. So what happens mm -hmm. is I am like, no, no, no. No, you do not see. I am not trying to say I'm SLE because I am equating SE to badassery and all this stuff. Mm. Which even you get that with the SEE typing too. That's why it's different from me and you. It says I think all uh, most people agree that it's. I mean, a lot of people agree that it's SE base, but then you get some people that disagree. It's just a lot of people essentially by the SLE typing, even the S. You, I mean, let me compose myself again. The SEE school of thought. These people, I think. Do not want me to be SLE, in my opinion, because there is a little bit of discrepancy between my FI. It's like, I think that is a big yeah. thing. But then there's also, okay, so what what I'm saying is, Alexander, I'd like to think that when you think I'm SEE, you just genuinely believe this based on your understanding of the theory. Well, SE, my thing SE, is not, yep. it's not even as much, it's not even as much like, um, I, I don't view you as having stereotypical, like, SEE's FI. Yes. It would almost be like 
<laughs> this is gonna sound like an insult. Well, but okay, I don't okay, okay. Can I interrupt you for one second, please? Because I've uh, just to yeah. kind of interject this too. I am really starting to think that SEEs are just kind of something that it's you know I I firmly believe I'm SLE, but I get what I think I get what Alexander is about to say. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I, I'm just saying that personally for me, it is something to note that a lot of SEEs, it is one of the most varied types in a lot of ways. And the way, what I mean by this is there's a lot of commonly accepted SEEs that are just like could night and day. You look at some of the warmest, the most, you know, virtuous, often a lot of like, you know, anime protagonists and stuff like that. I would even probably, I, I haven't given it too much thought, but I think there's a good chance that like maybe Sirius Black from Harry Potter would be SEE. But then you get some very vile people that like, you know, objectively are doing bad things. And I think that's kind of the, again, I like how you use the term meme, the meme definition of NI. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say the meme yeah. definition of, uh, or, yeah, you said in the meme definition of NI. I'm saying the meme definition of FI is just like how how much right. of a pussy you are. It's like it's. I think what people misunderstand is what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah. Like, if I hear, if I hear, it's not. I I'm like completely removed that I have any care whether these people are calling me a pussy or not, or if I am a pussy or not, or anything like this. It just doesn't. It really has no bearing. I just personally believe FI to be something. But let me let me wrap this up and then you can speak. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I, what I'm trying to say is that it's something to note that a lot of SEEs are often some of the most warm and like root for protagonists you could ever see. And a lot of them are just very objectively viewed as like not good people. I mean, it's, you know, you look at, look at Jordan Belfort from uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. I believe he is probably SEE as well. And, you know, a lot of people are like, he's a fucked up individual. It, yeah. It, well, that's what I was going to say. It's, it's not, a lot of people get this idea of, um, uh, of like someone is valuing FI, so they have to be very, uh, very careful and in touch with their individual mm -hmm. relationships mm -hmm. and so. But I think that you know, uh, there are SEEs that have some weird skewed version of FI, uh, maybe through traumatic events or maybe through it wasn't really uh, uh, celebrated and they're like. Uh, they, it wasn't really nurtured into them. Yes. And so they end up having this issue where FI is some, something almost that they kind of like deny and, and they don't really see in themselves. Uh, and, and a lot of people don't really see it in their behaviors or actions. Mm -hmm. And so like, it's interesting, man. It's interesting. Like, um, uh, I think Again, like the reason I say SEE is because of uh, social nuance, and and uh, it's less of stereotypical like FI things. Mm -hmm. Because when I look at you, I cl I clearly see you as having a lot of the same issues that I have with like um, interpreting people and stuff like that. Maybe yes. so, or or uh, not interpret. Yeah, like yeah, not not like. Like the way that you would in interpret like uh, a moral situation or like whenever there's moral ambiguity. It's like the other day I was in the chat and I was talking about a situation with my personal life and I was like, I need a, I need like a, a woman with strong FI to like be my therapist real quick because I don't know what the fuck to do. I have no idea. Like a lot of these situations, I'm just kind of like lost. So um, I see some of that with you as well. But um, but the but the social nuance is uh in the uh, giving credence so much credence to uh the social stuff is yeah. something that I don't relate to as much. But then again, this is why like you know this is why they make something systems and stuff. And this is why I so, love talking like this too. Honestly, is because we can. It's like you know because I think I think even you know when we were discussing EIE versus SLE for you, is we can often say like well, this is this, and then you, I, I'd like to believe that, you know, it's when I have the Ooh. EIE thing of you, it's like there's probably some things in there that I, maybe I said about what I believed then, even if it was kind of like, I would not necessarily say like contradictory, but maybe some things that I just wasn't really seeing big picture, but was kind of something yeah. that maybe maybe you're like, huh, maybe, maybe I could be EIE. And often when we have discussions like this, it makes me think like maybe I could be SEE or something. I, I firmly believe okay. I'm SLE, but I love these type of discussions because it, it's just good. It's it's no matter who the person, 
you know, what the scenario, we can all just get together and talk this typology stuff and really have it be that. Because I think, I think we can be on yeah, this. Fun. We're on to something, definitely. And on that note, I yeah. was going to say, too, that you're, um, you're, you're, you do run a server. I don't know if you want me to post on the below uh, description. That's completely up to you. Um, yeah, sure. You don't even, yeah. So do you want to say, okay, so do you want to say the name of it? Yeah, it's called Typology Thumos. It's, um, I'm currently trying to de potentially develop some kind of system based off like classical Greek physiognomy uh, and trying to maybe relate that with the Jungian elements or something. We'll see. But yeah, I type people sometimes in socionics um, and other stuff. And, yeah. and real quick, just for the viewers, um, what is physiognomy exactly to you? Like, like you know. And so it's like, um, I don't even really, I mean, to, I know what it is, but I don't. So maybe these people are like, huh? But they hear this, it's cool. And they yeah, yeah. So you, for trying to, yeah. trying to, trying to deduce, um, mental attributes and characteristics based off of the physical. So looking at your face, looking at your, uh, the shape of your skull, yes. uh, etc. Fantastic. All right. Well, there you have it, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you're keeping up, if you're keeping up to date with the stuff daily, <laughs> and I'd imagine there's probably not much of you yet, because everybody here is most likely here for my server. Um, <laughs> I want to let you know that tomorrow I would ideally like to get two typings done. So maybe we might have a double upload tomorrow. But as far as this one goes in particular, it's going to be uploaded pretty soon after I stop recording. What the hell was that like weird voice crack thing? I do not know. But anyway, we're going <laughs> to cut this off now. And I had a really good time. Thank you, Alexander. Yeah. Me as well. Thanks a lot. I appreciate yeah. it, man. All right.